All right, it's uh, three o'clock. I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. All right, first, uh, Kyle, do we have proof, and proof of notice and quorum? Yes, we have had proof of notice and a quorum is clearly established. We're good to go. Okay, great. How about, uh, does anybody want to make a motion to accept the minutes from February 21st? Any second? second? Rick, second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Okay, first we have the general manager's report <coughs> from Kyle. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, obviously, with the, uh, with the season heading, uh, heading for warmer weather and closing down, we have several projects we'll be working on this summer. Uh, in May, we'll be doing the pressure cleaning of the West Board wall all the way down where it's been cleared. Uh, we'll be pressure cleaning that. And we will also be pressure cleaning the, uh, the front exterior uh, brick uh, paveway, or, or paver. Paver wall will be, uh, will be cleaned um, as well on that. Various other summer projects are underway. The, um, as a matter of fact, we are looking at um, some serious needed spa repairs. We had the leak detectors come on in today, and it looks like we're going to have to have, we, we have a return pipe that we believe is, uh, is broken, so we need to be digging up in the, uh, in the spa and, uh, and doing some serious uh, repiping um, in for the spa area. Um, so that's going to be underway uh, this summer. Uh, as well as quickly as possible, honestly, as soon as we can get the quotes in from contractors to be able to do that work. That has, uh, has kind of popped up in the past week or so as far as um, that is concerned. Um, food and beverage operations update, obviously yesterday, very pleased. Uh, we had a great uh, Easter celebration here at the club, roughly about um, uh, 200 uh, members were in attendance with family. Um, for the Easter, so hats off to the team uh, for a great, great send-off on, uh, on the Easter. Um, when it comes to the hours of operation, May 1st, we will only be serving dinner on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday nights like we did last summer. Uh, we'll be offering um, the bar staff, and, and Laura have put together um, uh, drink specials on a daily basis. Um, the seven days will be open for lunch. Currently, right now, we'll continue to stay open with the 795 buffet on, uh, on Mondays through the, uh, through the month of May and see how the business goes and whether or not we have enough business for that. Uh, but it'll be the 795 buffet with the salad and hot dogs and miscellaneous stuff um, that we have since the, the golf course basically isn't closed any day of the week like other clubs normally do. So we'll go ahead and try that. Um, and then on Tuesdays, we're doing the Taco Tuesdays, um, things of that nature. And then we have um, uh, discount prices. For, for example, on Tuesday, we'll do two-for-one margaritas, uh, which the ladies tend to enjoy. Mondays, we're going to do two-for-one on all the well drinks and house wine and draft beer during the afternoon. Wednesdays, we're going to be doing two-for-one uh, on beer bottles or draft domestic beer. And then uh, on Thursdays, we're going to do two-for-one on a glass of wine. Fridays, we'll do two for one, all well drinks. Saturdays, because it's a heavy men's day, we'll do two for one on all, all draft beers, bottles, and pitchers on Saturdays to drive everybody in to enjoy, enjoy lunch. And on Sundays during lunch, we'll, we'll do $5 mimosa or Bloody Marys as part of the specials that we'll be doing all the, all the way through the course of the summer to help continue to drive business for us. Fitness center generator, uh, generator update, as the board is aware, the generator is in. The transfer switch has already been installed. We are just waiting for Collier County to um, generate the permit so that we can commence. We've already met with ball gas and the contractor as it relates, and as soon as the permit um, is issued by Collier County, we'll go ahead and, uh, and commence that work. It should all be done once we get the permit within a day or two. Um, of uh, the permit coming in. So, um, so that's kind of going very, very nicely as far as that's concerned. It'll be certainly in well before hurricane season, if there's any threats from our hurricane season. So that's very, very good uh, news to hear. Casino night, casino night update, April 30th, that is confirmed. It's a good function for the club. We're doing a pasta night with salad bar. 
that's priced at $38 uh, per person that Kiwanis will be paying for us, and then of course the, uh, the bar receipts as well. Uh, membership is uh, more than happy to buy tickets um, from Kiwanis, and we'll be sending out, I just got an updated flyer from the Kiwanis today, and we'll be sending that out to the membership, though there is information that's already out to the membership um, as we speak right now. Um, on summer membership, um, the summer membership has sold out. It was capped at 70 summer memberships, and summer membership commenced today. Um, the golf course was probably busier today because the summer membership has, uh, has kicked in. So that, uh, that program is in full swing. We turned around, we <laughs> turned away probably six or seven that got in, uh, that got in too late, uh, but they plan on being much, much quicker next year as far as that program is concerned. And obviously during the budget aspect, we'll decide whether or not we want to move into a single and a family membership per our discussions um, at the um, finance board workshop that took place on whether or not we should be raising those fees. But with the demand as high as it is, it looks like there certainly is, uh, there certainly is room to go ahead and, uh, and do that. Um, let's see, what else do I have? The electrical for the washers for the cart barn, uh, that is going in tomorrow. Uh, the plumbing will then commence, a different crew comes in to do the plumbing, but the electrical connections will all go in for the washer and dryer for the cart barn so we can establish the towel service for the carts and, uh, and we'll certainly purchase the towels as far as that's concerned versus uh, waiting, you know, renting them and doing all that type of stuff. And then final but not least, uh, our new assistant golf pro, Wyatt Taylor, is starting um, next week. And uh, Wyatt joins us from Kelly Green's Golf and Country Club and from Bonita National, where he was there for a few years. He's working on getting his Class A certification, and we anticipate, as part of our program with him, that he needs to attain that goal by November. And um, we, so we expect him to have his Class A by, um, uh, by that time. A wonderful, wonderful young man, uh, very well spoken. His, uh, his, some of you know, his references were just absolutely outstanding. A member, a board member that I spoke over at Benita National said, well, if Wyatt is coming to Royalwood, then maybe my wife and I need to sell and move to Royalwood. That's how much we appreciate Wyatt. So uh, I think we're in, we're in great shape with that. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, is his name Taylor or Turner? Wyatt um, Turner, I guess. Thank huh. you. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, director's comments and discussions. So is there anything that the uh, board would like to speak about that is not on the agenda for today? Thank you for the report, Kyle. Just a couple of questions I had to uh, clarify things. On the food and beverage operations, you mentioned Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is only uh, open for dinner. Correct. Could you clarify what the actual hours of the clubhouse will be? So typically, typically we serve dinner until 8 o'clock at night. Typically, we don't have anybody coming in past 7.30. Um, you know, so basically what happens is, is the clubhouse, basically the bar is open until 9 o'clock um, unless Unless it, unless it vacates on a Wednesday or Thursday night and everybody's gone. Um, so they play it by ear. Um, I have spoken to the staff about in season, about on the Friday night when we're busy and functions and things like that, that you cannot go home, um, you know, just because, you know, the band has stopped playing. The entertainment on Friday nights, um, Laura always has the option to extend the overtime on Friday nights if we have a very, very good crowd, and I have no problem doing that, and I tell the entertainers, and Joe Marino, who does all of our booking, um, understands that that's not a problem. Because for the entertainer, it's not a problem to stay an extra half an hour or another hour. Because they bill us for it, which is fine. And what about the other days, other than Wednesday, Thursday? Friday? Typically, um, typically, we'll close at 3 o'clock uh, for lunch service. Um, and, t and historically, the reason is, is by 3 o'clock, because of the way the summer weather patterns are, the clubhouse and the, and the golf shop in the, in the parking lot is literally a ghost town. Everybody gets in to play in the morning, they come in for lunch, and they're gone. If, it turns, if, it, if, it, if that trend changes, then we'll, certainly, we'll ch certainly change our trend. But it's very, very, very quiet um, after 3 o'clock. 
And regarding casino night, what is the projected net profit that you're expecting on that? I'm sorry? What is the projected net profit that you're expecting from casino night? Well, for us, at $38 a head, so if you get 125 on, on a pasta night, then you're talking about actually a very, very strong night for um, for our, you know, for our food costs, we'll probably run a, you know, a 30% food cost on that, and then of course, um, you figure that we'll probably do in gross receipts on that particular night, probably close to $6,000 in gross receipts, um, and it's the it's the buffet it's the buffet, buffet stations, et cetera, et cetera. So it'll be a, it'll be a strong, good financial night for the club as well as for the staff as well. But is that two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars? I would say, yeah, I would say that you're probably taking on a on a on a night like that. We're probably taking home a fifty percent house profit. Thank you. Yes. Sure. Go ahead, Jim. Sure. Yes. No, sir. No. No, what we did, the, um, he's asking about whether or not that was all done during the renovation. No, that was not done. The only thing that was done on the spa was um, a um, new pump, but the piping, was ne the piping was never replaced, and the inside of the spa was refinished and resurfaced. But it was never dug out um, to, do, to do any of that work, and that's necessary to go ahead and do that. Don't know. Uh, this is hot off the press with um, uh, leak detectors who we called in, um, and they're putting together some estimates, but we're probably talking uh, easily a couple of thousand dollars worth of work. Easily. Um, easily a couple of thousand dollars worth of work. A couple, couple of thousand, easy. I mean, the spa, for all intents and purposes, is it's the original spa and original piping. I'm getting a uh, I'm getting a quote for subbing that out, um, but it's not impossible for us to do it in house. Um, so I'm just gonna so I'm just doing that out of curiosity, because a lot of the pressure cleaning that we do we do do it in house. Other than the uh, sidewalks and the gutters, the sidewalks and gutters. Well, right now we have we have sidewalks we have sidewalks um, budgeted on an annual basis to be done uh, every year late fall. Okay, so um, going forward, if we felt that we wanted to go ahead and do that, then we would have to make that accommodation uh, within the budget to say, okay, we want it done at least at least twice a year. Correct, and I'm hoping with a with a with a professional company that can do that, they can also treat it as well to, for lack of a better word, to retard the mold growth so that maybe it only needs to be done on an annual basis. But I agree. All right. Any other comments from anybody on the board? Because I have a couple. Um, in the past couple of board meetings, we've had uh, Robert St. Francis uh, request that we have a independent audit done of project 2.0. Um, and what I'd like to do is make a recommendation to the board. I'll read it. As requested by Robert St. Francis on multiple occasions, management will acquire two estimates from competent organizations to perform a post-construction audit relating to the work done to complete project 2.0. In addition to these costs will be estimates to also include any in-house expenses as well as legal expense and the cost of our project manager and any, any other expenditures to complete this audit. After acquiring the estimated costs, a vote would go out to the membership to complete this project. Any funds that will be necessary to do this audit will have to be funded by a special assessment by the membership. This vote uh, to proceed would have to be approved by a majority of the members. So that's my recommendation. Um, anybody concur? So, yes.
that this is this isn't a vote to do anything. This is just a discussion, and uh, and what we would do is we would ask management. We would ask management just to to look into obtaining obtaining uh, uh, estimates from uh, two different companies. So the the way this would work is that um, staff will go on out and assemble and get uh, and get quotes prepared. Um, based upon the criteria that um, that is established, okay, and then from that point, it'll go it'll go to the board for its consideration, um, and at that time, the board would take a vote, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm basically just doing the due diligence, you know, to do that. But with that being said, let me let me remind the board that when Project 2.0 started, um, the board of directors hired a uh, owner's representative to represent the club in its best interest as it relates to the project and keep an eye out for us. So we basically had three major contractors on the project. We had, we had the general contractor and uh, we had the architect and then we had our um, civil engineering firm, Grady Miner. We're basically the three players that, um, that, did, that did any and all of the, of the billing that was out there. So when draw requests came in, um, they all went to Keith, who was the owner's representative um, at the time. And Keith reviewed MHK billing, and he reviewed the, um, the general contractor's billing per the terms of the outline contract. Grady Miner was very easy because they were just an hourly rate, and he would bill us in 1.5 hours for this and 1.5 hours for that, and met with county staff or whatever it might be. Um, so that was all reviewed and signed off on by Keith per the terms of the contract. And I'll give you an example. In the MHK contract, after the drawings were basically completed and accepted by the county and the permit was issued, their contract basically ended. And then we moved on to an hourly rate program for the architect on work that we needed to have, work that we needed to have done and revisions or whatever it might be. So the first, draw comes in from the uh, from MHK. Keith reviews that first draw request and we immediately realized that the billable rates that were in the contract that we signed with them are not the billable rates that they started applying to the work. Okay, and that was immediately discovered by our owner's rep. And immediately MHK didn't know how that occurred but they immediately reflected contractual hourly rates that were, were being established, okay? So we caught it right off that. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, that you hire an owner's rep who's basically representing your best interest in making sure the contract details are being, are being lived out. So when it came to the um, Kern and Young, the general contractor, they would, put in their, they would put in their draw request, and the draw request would go weighted against what the terms of the contract were on how much draw they could be taking at the various stages of the project that were completed. So Keith would compare that draw request based upon what was outlined in the contract and what phase they were at and what actual work had been done, plumbing, electrical, and, 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 and stuff like that. Well, on quite a few occasions, they had overestimated that subwork was gonna be farther advanced than, so they included that in their draw request. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that that work had not been completed yet but Kern and Young didn't update their, their draw request, or I should say draw it down to reflect actual. That was Keith, who sat with, with Bruce, the partner, and said, well, this hasn't been done, this hasn't been done, this hasn't been done. You're still two weeks away from that. That needs to be removed from the draw request, okay? And then resubmitted after completion. And that's the role that Keith, that Keith played on that. So, um, so I just wanted you to be aware of that as well as the members of the audience on that process. Dennis, um, I replied to your email when you sent this out earlier this afternoon, and many of you may not, have not seen it yet. Um, my own opinion here is we shouldn't throw our good money and staff time away chasing any recoveries that we may not be able to get. Um, but I do understand the community's uh, concerns regarding transparency about uh, the project shortfalls and some of the overruns we have. I guess we could let the membership decide this. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, 
but I don't think it would pass. And I want to remind everybody here on the board what whatever that the facilities planning committee comes up with here on their uh, assessment of the project 2.0 shortfalls that we want to correct, like the atrium, the sliding doors, the soundproofing, that's going to be a, probably an assessment as well. So I'm not assessment crazy for members of the club. But let's say this um, audit cost us $100,000 with all the associated fees of our attorneys, staff time, and the auditors. That would come out to $125 a door per member to conduct this. So that's my opinion on it. Well, that's up to the membership to decide. Correct. I'm sorry, what did you say, Jim? Sure, I didn't hear that. Yes, and I agree with that as well. And there's um, there's additional costs that we need to be aware of in tile when we do uh, see quotes from these reputable firms. I think we have to ask them uh, what kind of staff time is going to be required to uh, to perform the audit as well. My experience is you, you still need to have staff time devoted to do uh, pulling records and so forth. So we need to to be transparent on all of those costs. So the membership can make an right. informed decision there. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, you, you, you all are aware of the amount of time that Debbie prepares for getting just the, 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 the annual audit together for RSM. She spends hours and hours and hours and hours doing that, so I agree with you. Okay, I have one other uh, topic to discuss, and that would be the uh, uh, updating some of the ACK rules. And uh, what I'd like to do is uh, modify some of the rules in the application. Have it state that in the event a project begins that would be required to have ACK approval but has not been applied for and approved, then a fine will be imposed against the negligent party for every week that the project continues without the approval of an, of an ACK. A fine of $100 will be charged up to a maximum of $500. Next on the hedge rule, there's a hedge, hedge rule of six feet high uh, that we have. And uh, I'd like to modify that to eight feet for any hedge that abuts the clubhouse parcel here. And that's for, you know, people uh, trying to protect them from headlights and, and various things that go on, golf carts and things like that. Um, give them a little more protection just on this parcel that uh, is, uh, the clubhouse sits on. The height restriction will not apply to any masterboard common area because we have hedges out there on the golf course, like going down the 11th hole. Those hedges, we want them more than eight feet high to protect us, or protect the Naples Estates and uh, other things like we have hedges that are up against the uh, maintenance uh, barn, the, the walls up there. And it's, uh, I think it's a little more aesthetic to look at the hedges as opposed to a concrete wall. So it would not apply to any of the masterboard common area. And the last thing is on the uh, ARC approval sheets, it currently calls for a signature of the president or vice president of the masterboard. And I'd like to change that to have it read that any, any masterboard officer or director can sign off on those. After an owner pays the $500 and he still continues with the project, what are the consequences? The consequences would be that uh, we could demand that the whatever they're doing, they could reverse it if it's not approved. We could demand that they take out everything that they did. Good, a good question. I don't think it's ever happened, so we'll, we'll find out when we get there, and that would be probably, uh, unless Billy has an answer, maybe.
Okay, any questions to the, uh, the updating the ACA rules? If not, we'll go on to committee reports. First committee is Golf and Greens. Jimmy. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jimmy Cochran, chairperson of the Golf and Greens. We had a very busy season, just ending up, wrapping up. Uh, first of all, uh, Kevin Ackerman, his, uh, his report, there's going to be some closures to the golf courses on May 5th and, and the 12th for, for uh, aeration, approaches to the tees, fairways. Also, uh, July 7th and 11th, they're going to be uh, dry ejecting all the greens. Uh, all those dates are on the Thursdays. So upcoming is May, May 5th and May 12th. On golf operations, uh, Greg Long, uh, you already heard he uh, just hired a new assistant, uh, Wayne. Wayne Turner, he was from Kelly Greens and Benita National. Great young man, be a great, great addition. And he knows uh, computers too, so that will be a big help. Uh, the, I'll give you a, a few statistics that Greg uh, like to share with you, how busy this golf course is. In 2021, there were 30,725 18-hole rounds of golf. Nine holes were 8,908, and walking was 808. Right now, we're on the, uh, on the course to go above that. So you can, use, you can use, do the numbers. That's a lot of income coming in, but I'm not at the liberty to say and I don't want to make a mistake of how, how much income. I'll defer that to the board. Uh, the summer membership started April 18th, and it goes to December 31st. And uh, you're already aware that in 2021, we had 67, and now we're maxed out at uh, 70, 70 members. Also, uh, on the, there was a new tournament this year on Sunday, April 10th, the Masters event. Uh, this was brought up by Kyle LaBelle and myself with uh, Greg Long and Kyle Kenny, the G GM, and we kind of put it together a little fast a couple weeks before. But we had a great turnout. We had uh, 98 players. It was a co-ed scramble. It was a uh, eight o'clock shotgun, and everyone had a, a great time. Uh, there was a little twist to it. Um, after each each foursome had a handicap, fifteen percent of the total, but each foursome was assigned a pro from the Masters. So the top twenty-five pros ending on Saturday the pro was then assigned to their group. So no one knew who won the tournament until the end of the Masters. Uh, the winner of the tournament is, uh, I think, Rick Murphy, who made a few dollars. <laughs> he had uh, Rory McAvoy. All right, so it was a good deal. Uh, next on the agenda, Appreciation Day was well received. It was uh, the net profit on Appreciation Day. Net profit this year was $8,729. Uh, with the rollover, we have uh, a little over 18000 in the kitty. Uh, we have been getting suggestions of where to spend the money as you, as everyone knows, I mean, we don't know uh, the last time the year before, we spent $10,000 out of the Appreciation Day Fund for the atrium blinds. 
So we have been taking suggestions. I'll just read a, a few off to you. These came from uh, members here. But we're not going to ma be making any, any decisions till the future meeting. Uh, that will be in November. But uh, more bistro tables in the atrium. Electric car charging station in Royal Wood. A tall clock that tells time on both sides. A wall unit blow dryer to be installed in the ladies' room in the clubhouse. Awnings on the outside to cover the patio. Blinds in the dining room. More tables in the grill room. Matching outdoor tables and chairs. Leaderboard outside a pro shop. And it goes on and on and on. But any uh, suggestions, you can email me. Also, uh, Sue Fontaine, she's the vice chair of the committee. Okay. So my next part is the 18-hole ladies. Uh, 95 members. But what I'm going to do now is give uh, some recognition. If I can find it. So the ladies, 18, had a very busy season, a lot, of, a lot of tournaments. But the ladies were represented by Gina Murphy, President, Mindy Norbaum, Vice President, Kathleen McEachern, Secretary, Robin Murphy, Treasurer, Margie Morales, Tournament Chairperson, Terry Looker, Handicap Chairperson, Beth Keenan, Rules Chairperson, and Kathy Reed, uh, Media Past President. Uh, one thing about the ladies, they put a lot of charity work and they raised a lot of money for local charities and I believe I stated that in my past uh, presentations. The Nine Hole Ladies, they had 129 members and their board was Patty LaBelle was a president, Patty Lincoln vice president, and she will be the new president. Jennifer Rainhammer was the secretary, Chris Bagley, treasurer, Jana Feely, rules chairperson, Gail Chan, social chairperson, Pat Bada, handicap honors, Christy Copeland, tournament chairperson, and Christy Arnold, invitational chairperson. And the last of the committee, the men's 18. The men's 18 members had 204 members. Danny Jones, president, Mike Fortanimous. Uh, Mike put in, he's retired nine years of uh, being the president. Dave Duncan, vice president, secretary. Lee Keenan, treasurer. Steve Groves, rules chairperson. Ryan Smith, tournament chairperson. And Bob Mitchell past president. So I think uh, all these people put a lot of hard work this past season. So a little round of applause for, for all these hard working people. Okay. And ending uh, for the season, I just want to recognize my Golf and Greens Committee. Uh, we had uh, five meetings. We had a meeting uh, last November, January, February, March, and we just had a meeting a few weeks ago. Uh, Sue Fontaine, Vice Chairperson, Secretary, Gina Murphy, Pat Littlebell, Dan Jones, Jim Rickett, Larry Palmer, Greg Long, Kevin Ackerman, Kyle Kenny, and Gary Norbaum was on the Golf and Greens Committee. So a little shout out to them. Right. Okay. So in ending, I want to wish everyone a great summer, safe travels, and uh, we'll see you down here at the beautiful Royal Wood Golf Course uh, in the fall. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Jim. Uh, next, we have health and safety. Elaine.
Good afternoon, everyone. The single family homeowner's representative, Mark Spadola, reported that he spoke with a homeowner that had been robbed last season. When she had the police come to investigate, they asked if we had cameras at our exits. They told her that it would be helpful in identifying the perpetrators. I recalled that the topic had been discussed at a master board meeting previously. At the November 7, 2019 master board meeting, it was stated that cameras were still in the docket and $18,000 had been aside, set aside for the project. The Health and Safety Committee would like to look at the pros and cons of installing cameras. While the addition of cameras might bring peace of mind to some, there are valid reasons not to install them in the neighborhood. I found an article online that is very informative on the negative aspects of installing neighborhood cameras. If you are interested, I would be happy to share the information with you. Since the topic of installing cameras in Royal Wood has been discussed over the years, it might be beneficial to look at the information and make a decision one way or the other. Pam Bethina reported that since the end of March, the volume of traffic on Royal Wood Boulevard has decreased by 3,300 vehicles. At the November 15, 2021 Master Board meeting, Kyle proposed to have an area outside designated for cigar smokers. He referred to the current location for cigarette smokers. There was a unanimous vote by the master board against cigar smoking on the Royal Wood campus. This does not include the golf course area. Since that time, an individual reported that on three occasions, she encountered cigar smoking. On one time, in a crowded staging area for golf carts for a shotgun start. As you all know, this is a very congested area with many people. The Health and Safety Committee proposes that in lieu of more signs throughout the campus, that management send email flyers to the community stating the ban on cigar smoking. Royal Wood residents have to remind their guests of this rule. Also, the wait staff should not be responsible for enforcing this rule. This should be the responsibility of management. The problem with exiting the clubhouse pool has been resolved with the addition of a lock release to be used only in cases of an emergency. There have been occasions that glass bottles and drink wear have been left in the clubhouse pool area. Please do not bring glass of any kind to the pool area. New railings have been installed on both sides of the gullies in the parking lot, which should prevent any further accidents. On Monday, April 11th, we had a sem seminar on ID theft and fraud sponsored by the Collier County Sheriff's Office. It was very informative and well received by everyone. There were 40 attendees. Next season, we will plan on continuing the seminars. This was not part of my original report to the Master Board, but I think it's important information to share. At our health and safety meeting last Thursday, Brenda Kurtzstetter told us that the fire department has a special non-emergency number to call. It is called Lift Assist. This is for situations where someone has fallen at home and they cannot get up. I have had experiences like this at home and had to call my brothers to help me with my husband. Now that the season is ending, I won't be able to depend on them. Knowing that this service is available gives me peace of mind. The telephone num number for Lyft Assist is 239-252-9300. That's 239-252-9300. It's been a very busy year with many, many safety additions to Royal Wood. We hope that we have responded to your comments and complaints in a satisfactory and timely manner. For those of you that are leaving, have a wonderful and safe summer until we see you again. Those of us that stay on in Royal Wood will enjoy the reprieve from traffic and shorter lines at Costco. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Next, we have uh, the ARC Committee with Billy.
Good afternoon. I'm Bill Lindley, Chairman of the ARC Committee. Um, Dennis has already covered uh, a couple of the issues that uh, we had been working on over the last couple of months as far as um, people performing work without their permits. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Thank you for uh, addressing that. The two uh, things I have to report, we do have two properties currently under uh, serious review. One is a deficiency where they did exactly what was brought up at your meeting, a major amount of work structures and major changes to uh, landscaping without any ARC permit. Some of these uh, changes actually violate Collier County's regulations. For those who are not aware, 80% of your uh, landscaping turf in your yards must be remaining as grass. You can't rip everything up in your yards and mulch it and do whatever you want with it. That's a Collier County regulation, and you can look it up. I'll get you the number if you want it. So anybody who thinks that they just want to turn it into somewhat like a, uh, an Arizona desert type of thing with a bunch of mulch and bushes, you, um, you're violating Collier County's regulations in addition to the fact that we probably would not authorize a plan like that. The second uh, one, we have a, uh, a property that's been a, a problem for as long as I've been on this board, and it, and it doesn't seem to uh, get any better. It's an issue where it's just a, a continual maintenance neglect type of program, and I've, I've written a, a letter, and I do think between the homeowners now being involved in part of that maintenance process and the master board, we will have to once again uh, approach this project in the manner that we discussed where we may have to go in and do that work ourselves and bill it to the property. And because it's a, a basically a negligent um, owner that's never here besides all the other issues. Like there's never, he's never physically here. So we do have that problem. Uh, the only other thing I'd like to bring up <laughs> Uh, just to let you know, I'm not sure it's an arc issue, but there's a, a drain curbing on uh, Westburg Drive, Kyle, that, uh, the, you know, how the curbing goes and then the water's supposed to go down the drain and there's like the big manhole cover. There's a, the entire facing of that curbing is missing and it's a massive hole and it could become a serious injury if for either a pet or a person getting too close to falling down that. It's right past Moody's house, between his house and that forest. It's on the right-hand side there, but somebody should take a, a quick look at that. Well, I, I'll add that to the list because I'm trying to get somebody in Collier County to give me a straight answer on who is responsible for the storm drainage system. The roads are private, as we very well know, owned and maintained by Royalwood but the storm sewage system is owned by Collier County. Collier County regulates the water levels in the lake and the release and all of that. So um, I'm hoping I can get something now this week. If not, I'm going to ask for our uh, county commissioner to offer some assistance on that. But I will add that to the list because I believe that's number three. Okay. Uh, and the only other issue I have uh, received, I'm, I continually receive requests to replace uh, driveways. And we don't have a problem with you replacing the driveway, but we do require a diagram stating, okay, this is exactly what we're replacing in our driveway with concrete brick and things like that. If it's going to be replaced as is, like the actual driveway that it currently is, then draw that out for us, give us, it's 20 feet wide, it's 25 feet long because we uh, don't want to get into some issues that we've had in the past over that. So I've got a couple of those here that I'll have to be returning to people that will be upset because they get returned. But we do have to have diagrams for driveway replacements so we know exactly what they're putting in. And other than that, have a good uh, summer, and I'll see you in the fall, I guess. Oh, sorry, just one more thing, and that has come up too. 
um, many people are cutting down trees in their properties, and one gentleman said he, uh, he sent me a, uh, a thing from his tree cutting company that stated that uh, they didn't need a permit in a residential environment, a residential lot. But in the case, I went and researched it, and in actual fact, you do need a permit because your residential lot is part of what we call the PUD. So it's not like an individual lot up and down a street on a road somewhere. It's part of the Royal Wood PUD. And therefore, to cut down a tree, you do, do need to get a permit from Collier County. So be careful about that because we have had some finding issues, particularly down in the, some of the condo areas. So it's just to let you know. Thank you, Bill. Okay, next we have uh, Facilities Planning Committee. Mike. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, I'd like to update everyone on where we are with the Facilities Planning Committee. Uh, I hope everyone knows that our top priority projects we've identified it's the Clubhouse Building Acoustics, pickleball availability or additional pickleball. Outdoor seating slash atrium, and now retractable wall options. Um, our goal for these projects, the, the subcommittees for each of these projects have been working really, really hard and have come up with some great information and some great options, I think, for the community. And so our main goal now is to really get a survey put together. And our goal is to have a survey sent out to the entire Royal Wood community by the 1st of May that will outline what we've been working on, will we'll give the community options, and, in, and also that will include um, some cost information so that you'll know which options are more expensive than, than, than another option. And uh, we're really looking forward to get to that point because right now we really don't want to put much more time into some of these things unless we're sure that everyone here wants these things done and, and want us to put in more effort to, to work um, in putting together uh, uh, more budget figures and, and getting together, getting together uh, real quotes to get this work done. And so it makes no sense for us to spend our time when, we, when, when not everyone here will see the advantage of having this stuff done. And so these, these surveys go out. I ask everyone, please, if you get it, take a few moments and look at it and, and uh, fill it out and get it back. Uh, because the, the, the surveys um, will dictate what, what we do going forward, um, and, and it will dictate what the community wants. And, uh, and so, again, it's just the, the, the way it works here. Some people will want certain things, and, of course, others might not. But uh, I guess it will be the majority wins out uh, in some of these things. Um, we will move forward with engineering, design, and construction costs to present to the Board of Directors for their approval. And then from there, I'm sure, we'll have a detailed presentation uh, for the community uh, to, to think about a, approval for funding for moving forward. And so that's where we are right now with, with the planning facility on our top priorities. We do have other projects that we're working on. Um, I'll, I'll just throw these out to you so you, you'll know what we're doing. Uh, but the first thing is better utilization of meeting rooms one and two. Uh, general improvement of the existing outdoor patio areas. Enhanced flooring options, ceiling fans, additional seating if possible. So we're trying to, trying to see if we can't make that, those areas a little bit nicer uh, than what they currently are. Uh, we're looking at the clubhouse sound system. Uh, for, we're going to review it to make sure that we have the correct sound system. We're going to uh, make sure that we are using the sound system correctly. Um, and then we're also going to look at getting additional or better quality microphones. I hope, can everyone hear me today with this? I know that sometimes it's tough to understand the, 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 the board of directors through, through those uh, microphones. And so we're looking into that, uh, as well as uh, setting up a Zoom meeting capabilities for this room so that as we go forward, we can have board meetings and everyone can get in on them on Zoom, whether it's a board meeting or, or other meetings. And so that, that's what we're working on as far as the, the IT part of the building. And then also uh, updating or remodeling the sand trap meeting room 
to hopefully optimize the use of that particular room. And so as everyone knows, we, 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 we're limited to with the amount of space that we have here. What we have is beautiful. We love what we have. But it really comes down to utilizing the space correctly. And I think that's really our biggest uh, task. And, and when you look at a lot of the stuff that we're working on, it really comes down to that, is going forward, how do you take it the best advantage of what we have? So that it, 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 just, it, it just gets better and better every year. And we can do that without having to get a bigger and bigger building every year. And so that's what we're really working on and trying to accomplish. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, next, we have Social Committee. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Diane Hazarin. I'm representing the Social Committee. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who attended the farewell party. Uh, we had a full house, and I think everyone had a fabulous time. If you did miss it, you can tune in to Channel 102 and see some photos of those people that were there. Um, the next thing that we have coming up is on May 7th, it will be the Kentucky Derby. If you haven't been here for this, this is an annual event for us, and actually it's the 148th running of the Kentucky Derby. We start out with a decorated golf cart parade. So if that sounds like something you'd like to do, what you would need to do is reserve your golf cart at the pro shop not before April 28th, and then you pick it up, decorate it, and report back here at 3.30 where you'll be judged, and the parade will begin. So the parade goes through all the streets in Royalwood, and um, if you're not in it, you're going to have just as much fun watching it, because I've seen some of these neighborhood block parties that form, and they have a great time. Um, the prizes will be given at the party that will then form up at the clubhouse, We'll open the doors at 5, we will have wagering, and we will have a, a hot hat contest for the females, uh, which we will also have prizes for, and we will have dinner, and it should be a great evening. We'll have the Kentucky Derby on the screen right here. We could use some help, so if anybody would feel like they would like to judge the cart parade, uh, please see me, or if you'd like to help in some other way, please see any member of the social committee. This is not it for the summer, though. For those of you that stay behind, uh, we are going to attempt to run two events, one in July and one in August. So there will be something for you to do all summer. Thanks so much again for all your support. Thank you, Diane. All right, next on the agenda is old business, and I don't believe there is any old business. Oh. Okay, new business, the approval of the Elks Club tournament request. Want to do that? Certainly. <clears throat> As um, the Golf and Greens Committee is well aware of and voted at on their last um, committee meeting, the Elks Club contacted, um, actually it's a member who contacted Royal Wood to see whether or not the Royal Wood would host their golf outing in, um, in June. Greg outlined the details. Um, that particular function is basically a golf only. There's no food and beverage uh, associated with, uh, with that event whatsoever as they will be returning to the um, Elks Club uh, for their food and beverage portion of and, and for, uh, food and beverage function of that. The price that was given to Elks Club was uh, $42 per person, if I'm not mistaken. 40. How much? No, the, no, 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 that, that's, that's their, their tickets might be for Elks Club. We're charging, we're charging, I believe, $42. Uh, we're charging $42 um, uh, per person for the event. The Golf and Greens Committee um, approved, uh, approved that at the committee level, and at this time, I'd like for somebody to make a motion to, um, uh, to approve it and then second it so we can go ahead with this booking. Correct. Um, I believe it's on a Sunday in late June. Third Sunday, yeah, third Sunday in June, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken. So it'd be, it'd be a shotgun start. They're gone by noon. 
you know, if there's any play that's available for, because they don't have enough players, then obviously Greg would allow them to jump in and play 18 holes from a member perspective. So it's a morning shot, yeah. That's correct. 26th. Thank you. So if they have 100 players, you're talking about $4,200 in cart fees. All right, so does anybody like to make a motion to approve this function? I make a motion to approve. Any seconds? Second. I in second. All in favor? Discussion first. Oh, okay. Discussion first. I am one that's not a big proponent for people come using our golf courses, then refusing to use our facilities afterwards. Kyle, did you ever talk to them and see if they were interested in, in ha having their after golf uh, party in here at all? No, I have not reached out to them and said, hey, why don't you come in and do and do this? I, th I think the reason for the Elks Club doing it is, is because they have a bunch of volunteers who you know, cook their hamburgers and hot dogs and, and do all of that type of stuff. But I'm more than happy to reach out to them and say, why don't we just, what would it take to do full turn? Um, as we very well know, you know, at the Elks Club and the other various organizations like that, fraternal organizations, you know, they, they're selling a bottle of Budweiser for, you know, for $1.50, um, you know, and that's a real big, real big deal. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to be in a situation where in an effort to get the Elks the business that, you know, I would deeply discount, you know, our, our beverage side, our beverage side of the program. So um, I am going to contact them to see whether or not I'd like to go ahead and have a beverage cart available. And to be honest with you, I do not need their permission to have a beverage cart available. I can just have one available and, uh, and sell that food and beverage. But the shotgun start is, um, I'm assuming it's going to be an 8 o'clock shotgun start. So, but I haven't reached out to them to say, hey, we we wouldn't mind getting a slice of your food and beverage uh, portion of it, which I'm more than happy to do. There's plenty of time. Okay, because so, I have a couple concerns always with outside out, outings, uh, especially with fraternal so, uh, organizations. A lot of times they will bring their own alcohol in, and we have to absolutely make sure that this does not happen. Um, and also we're going to have to, would have to have strong rangers out there because once again, these are not members of our club, they're guests. And my history with golf outings at my club back, they're not too kind to the golf course. That's another concern uh, that I have with an outside outing. And the third thing, when these people come and play our golf course, then throw their clubs in the trunk and slam it, and drive away, I think it's insulting to our club that they won't use our facilities for the after party. So I probably will not be voting to approve this. Um, I, I think we're setting a precedent here for any future people that want to come here and have an outing in off season, uh, that we have a wonderful restaurant and a bar right in the building, and this should be the place they should use afterwards. Yeah, following up on those comments, I completely agree with you um, on that. Um, that we would not even consider any future golf outing if it wasn't if it wasn't the full Monty food and beverage the the, the whole package. Uh, so I, I concur um, with you on on that statement. Kyle, do we have a lot of uh, elk members in this uh, community? I I don't know. I, I do know of somebody who's on. Is the there is there anybody on the board or anybody who works for us or employee that's an elk member? I know no. Um, I was a different member of a different club than Elks, um, but um, I know that there's a member on the golf uh, golf and greens committee that is a member from, is a member of the Elks, and I believe he said that there are other Royalwood members that are members of the Elks as well. But I don't I don't have any hard number on that whatsoever. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of against it because it's, it's going to start something. Well, the, 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 way, the way that the program would work is, is in, and the way, the way it goes, anybody that wants to do any type of outside function, it needs to be generated. The, the first request has got to come up into my office. Um, and um, this particular member who happened to mention something to Greg, and Greg 
basically was like, well, you know, we're always looking for functions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's been, the, you know, this is the first one ever that we've actually done since I've been here. And then before you know it, that particular member took advantage of saying that, that this was going to definitely go and went ahead and put, and put a flyer out and sent it out. And we hadn't even confirmed it yet. Well, it, this is a private club unless there were a certain percentage of members who were members of ELF. Sure. Right? I don't, I don't see where it's uh, appropriate for us to have this tournament abuse, possible abuse of the golf course for any of that to happen. So when it comes to the, um, we, we would have two on the front and two on the back nine patrolling um, during the tournament, which will be provide ample coverage. At you know. whose expense? Well, the, I mean, that, that'd be at the club. I mean, we would, you know, obviously we would have our, our rangers, you know, our rangers out there just like, we, you know, we normally do. But, I mean, the, the event, and I've got no love affair with the Elks Club by any stretch of the imagination, um, but, you know, you, it is generating the, the income for that, and that's, that's going to be basically about the only expense, you know, so... What do you mean, what would the cost? Well, I mean, how much would it cost us to have more time to meet with the Yeah, but we would, we would have, I mean, the, the golf course will be open that day anyways. So, I mean, it's, it's not as if you're, you know, you're still going to have your pro shop staff in. You're still going to have car pa car barn. That's correct. That's correct. No, it, it's, I mean, it, we all know that it's a, sl it's a slow time of the month. And just like everybody else, they want to do a morning shotgun because it's, you know, 99 degrees out by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. No, oh, you know, I would say you might have, uh, you know, it all depends on the weather, but, you know, I don't know, 30, 40, you know, you know. You know, so it's tough. It's tough to gauge. So if we had 30, 40, 50, you're guessing, correct? Yes. Okay. That would be loss of that revenue compared to what we're making. Um, it, it, it all depends. So if you, if you, if they wanted to go ahead and join the, say that there was enough players for a full shotgun start for, for the Elks, and if, um, and if a member, whether it's a summer member or whether or not it's a regular member, said, well, we have an, a shotgun start, you're more than happy to jump in on that so that you can play, you're more than happy to, okay? Um, that, would be, that would be the case, and that would be the one condition but that you would do. the Elks would have first choice. Yeah, so the, elk, the Elks would send over how many people they have, and if they have five foursomes, that they can't fill, then we would go ahead and allow that to be for member play. And then so it's not members. going to be that big of a money maker if you account for the amount we're going to lose if it's filled up by out. Yeah, I guess the question is the question is whether or not that because of the particular tournament are we are they just picking a different day or are they just going to cancel altogether? And that's for you that play regularly. That's a decision that you know, that you would, you know, that you would have to make. Kyle, the, the issue I have is not necessarily with this particular request, but I, I think it's similar to the casino night in that the procedures for making these decisions need to be clearly laid out so decisions aren't being made before um, it goes to the full, full governance process. So, you know, the fact that they went ahead and started selling tickets for this before the board even had an opportunity to, to d discuss this. It's embarrassing. And we need to have lock tight procedures in place so when these things come up again that we have all of the appropriate information to make an intelligent decision. So which I'll, I'm more than happy to draft that. As you very well know, um, you know, it, it, 
was always a situation of, oh, gee, if we can get outside functions in the summer and wedding receptions and things like that. But of course, nothing's ever happened. Obviously, we were closed for a year and a half, and it was COVID and, and, and stuff like that. But um, staff will draft a, a policy for whether it be just a food and beverage outside function or whether or not it would be a golf with a food and beverage function. The policy would be stated that any golf function to be entertained by the board of directors for approval um, shall also consist of the accompanying uh, food and beverage, whether it be a lunch, if you're, playing, if you're playing a morning shotgun, or whether or not you're playing a, a afternoon shotgun. It shall be accompanied by a, you know, by a banquet of some sort to be, cho you know, be chosen and, and worked on by the club. So that, because the reality is, is that we want to go ahead, you know, especially during the summertime, if we can get some of those functions, things of that nature, then, you know, then we want them to know what our policy, our policy is, is. So when it does go to the full board, all of those, for lack of a better word, those procedures on how this lead got generated and what they've attained is all clearly been established and the board can easily sit there and say, okay, well, this, cl this clearly follows it and it's on a Saturday night in August when we're not open, so of course we want to go ahead and accept this wedding reception, for example. So I will, we will get that drafted for this board. And I would suggest including in that a complete profit and loss um, estimate too, or projection. Yeah, we can do, we can do the projection. Uh, what's even better is, is that we would do the, um, that, cost analysis, that cost analysis after, after the function as well. You know, here's the actual, here's the actual revenue um, you know, after after expenses that that came in. Yeah, that was um, that was discussed at the Golf and Greens Committee, and that will be ensure that they do they do have the proper insurance. Um, so that is, I believe, is the reciprocal rate. If I'm not mistaken, but at the at the board's desire, at the board's desire, if we wanted to increase that. And we wanted to go ahead and approve the event, but at a different rate, then the board has that right to go ahead and, and determine that and say, here's the deal. Take it or leave it. That's fine. All right, is there any more discussion amongst the board? I withdraw the motion. Okay, it's already been made and seconded. Um, I'm not familiar with the, the process now. At, at this stage of the game, you, you just call for the vote. All right. If it fails, it fails. Okay. All right, all in favor of this uh, golf outing on the 26th? from the uh, Elks Club, say aye. All opposed? Nay. Does not carry, motion does not carry. Very good. Okay, next we have the uh, approval or ratification of the approval of the Yamaha cot lease. Um, the Yamaha cot lease is going to take effect either in September or October when we get the cots. Uh, the cot lease was signed and uh, we just want to ratify uh, the signature or the approval of that, of that lease signature. So um, do I have a motion to ratify the cot lease? I'll make a motion we ratify the cart lease. 
I know some of you sitting here, we've done this before. Um, however, when we had to renegotiate and get the year newer model cards with the lithium batteries compared to the first original proposal we had, uh, it required a new contract and we had to clean up some language changes uh, in the new contract uh, with some concerns the board had, board had. So that's why we're doing this again. But I do make a, a motion to accept and uh, make this proposal go forward. Any seconds? Second. All right, Rick seconds. Any discussion? I'll make it even easier. Card fees for the members. Um, hang on a second. Well, it, it's projected. We we haven't uh, said that we'll set that in October with the budget, but the uh, what we're looking at probably is a dollar increase. But, what, but, but once again, realize that these will be brand new cards with GPS systems provided inside them. Um, it'll, it'll be very beneficial to the community uh, and it, it, it'll increase and enha uh, enhance the golfing here at Royal Wood. Increase the golf cut fee by one dollar. All right, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next on the docket is uh, food and beverage discussion. Uh, what I'd like to do is to um, just talk about, you know, things that uh, you're hearing from your constituents. This is members of the board only, please. Uh, uh, things that you're hearing from your constituents about uh, uh, the feedback you're getting on the food and beverage operation here at the club. So if anybody can jump in. Yeah, Kyle, at our last meeting, I was wondering what the... Uh cost with the tip of 18% and you were having trouble. We, I, I've heard that we're still having a lot of buffets and stuff and most of the members I talked to would like to get it a little bit more upscale. And Correct. did you ever get the answer to what an average would be for what we are paying with their tips uh, because we're having trouble getting uh, servers? Well, the good news is, is that as we've, you know, the, the last couple of last couple of weeks, we've brought on, we've brought on more servers. So, um, some of the buffets were already basically scheduled. Uh, for example, the Easter stations was the way that we were going to do that. But the trend, we're in a very, very good position right now in staff levels in the kitchen and in with the uh, with the wait staff on that. So. Um, there will be no, there's, there's no love affair with putting in the buffet, so you'll be finding far more a la carte dining as we go through, obviously, the summer and as we go through into the fall and we reopen, you know, full time in, in the evenings. So um, it, won't, it could, won't be at the consistency. Could we have that information of how the tips are being split up and what it works out to our servers? Yes, yeah, so when you talk about the gratuity, so... The, uh, the, so, for example, there are some functions where the staff decide to go ahead and pool the gratuities, okay? And then on many, many evenings where it's strictly a la carte dining, like on a Friday night and tables and stuff like that, then there is no, there is no tipped gratuities. Excuse me. There are no pooled gratuities. Um, they earn basically, you know, those tables that they, that they waited tables on uh, for that evening. Uh, and the same goes with Janet at the bar. Um, and then Janet pays out, um, and they pay into the bar for the service bar aspect of it. Pretty standard policy in, in most um, food and beverage operations. Um, so I don't know what, you know, um, yesterday I think they did uh, pooled gratuities um, yesterday for the, for the Easter function. So the way that works is there's a total pot of gratuity that's collected, and then each server, based upon the amount of hours that they worked for that particular day, you know, get their get a, their cut. A couple clubs that I've had the opportunity to eat at, the uh, staff seemed a lot more uh, professional. Okay. Okay. And I was wondering if they were making a lot more money. That's why I'm asking you wow. if they were making a lot more money than our staff, and that's why they have that. Professional yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's that. Um, 
you probably are talking about more of a of a club that has a very seasoned a seasoned veteran team that's been in there year in and year out, season after season, and they're they're very well oiled. They know their members. They're very strong in their service skills, um, and that's why and, you, and it reflects in the service level that you know that you get at the uh, at the club. So there is there is benefit as everyone realizes that as long as your team is staying together and they keep working together and working together and working together, they become more cohesive and they become stronger in their positions. We were not necessarily in a position when we were taking a look at um, uh, four employees um, to make sure that they had a high level of service experience to be able to bring them on board. And our position was we're gonna, we're gonna not, we're not looking for any type of experience, don't get me wrong, but what we're looking for is personality and we're looking at just how they basically operate are they outgoing? Do they seem friendly? Do they want to be in this business and do that? And then we can go ahead and really start to work on the fine tuning of the training and how you set down meals and you serve from left to right and you clear a different way. Where should you position yourself when there's only two people at the table to take your order? How you should not be behind them, having making them overlook your shoulders. You should be in front of them in some of those details. Yeah, but I've also noticed that you know, I've been in here at different times. The wait staff seems to be preoccupied and they don't, like I just went and got an iced tea and I'm sitting at the bar and I made eye contact with the girl behind the bar mm -hmm. and I finally had a wave to her and I pretended to, I said, did I, like, you couldn't see me? So I went down low, is that why I'm not getting my iced tea? And other clubs I've been at because I was a member of another club and I have friends in other clubs mm -hmm. and I, I dine there pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. They just seem so much more attentive to the clientele and I don't know if that's how our people have been trained or if it's we're not paying them enough to get that quality of people. Well, I mean, um, we did give we did give the the staff, the hourly staff, a a pay rate a pay rate increase. We we were we continue to be competitive. There's a wage survey that's going out now amongst the other Sarah clubs that I'm a part of, as they're getting ready, just like we will for our 2023 budget. That's saying, okay, everybody, what are you talking about? Get, increasing your wage staff too, and your bus boys, and your food runners, and, and things and, of, things and of that who's nature. Who's responsible for training our wait staff? That'd be uh, that'd be Laura's responsibility okay. as the food and beverage director to train them. Thank you. No, nope, thank you. I'm going to top on top of you, Mark, there a little bit. Um, as most of you don't know, I've been in the hospitality, bowl and alley restaurant business my whole entire life. Uh, one of the biggest things I see is a miss here is the lack of hello, goodbye, thank you from servers, bussers, waiters. And that's important, whether we're private or not. That's an important concept of, Mark, what you're getting to is friendliness and feeling welcomed um, that I really need to see more of here. Um, it's also, as you're waiting to get a drink, acknowledgement. You know, Mark, Brian, hey, I'll be right with you. I don't see enough of that here either. Mark, you're also in a corner, and you gotta, you got to wave them down. That's just poor training, and that needs to be addressed. Um, very fair comments. Thank you. Uh, Kyle, mm -hmm. we've had some good reports for the food quality over here, and we have had uh, almost twice or three times as many poor qu reports of poor, poor quality. Uh, what are we doing to address that issue? Well, I will tell you that, um, you know, we've, we've, I think we've hit far more very, very positive um, functions for the, uh, for the food uh, than we've hit, than we've hit negative. Um, I know no, that I'm not I talking about functions, I'm talking about everyday food. Um, well, I think that um, that's going to be just a, a, a good situation for chef to get basically re-energized and refocused, take a look at our menus and, um, and be able to dedicate some more, you know, some more focus on his part, um, you know, to that. Have you ever thought of hiring a consulting company to help? No, I have not had that conversation <coughs> with him. 
No, um, have you thought about it? No, I have not had that conversation with Could with you anyone. think about it and see how much it would cost to get a good consultant to help him? Yeah, certainly. I can I can get you know, I can get costs for anything, that's for sure. There's no doubt. Also, Kyle, who who's oversees the uh, food and beverage? Uh, well, Laura sees the over, Laura oversees the front of the house, and Chef oversees the back of the house. Okay, the the master chef. Correct. Said, okay. Do you think he should report to the board every month to come in, like we have the golf committee and uh, different committees, and report what he's doing to improve it, so we understand it instead of having it being an ongoing thing? Um, well, I tell you, if that was the case, it'd be it'd be the first time in my club career that that's ever been done. I'm not saying that the board can't, you know, can't request that and would appreciate that. Um, I don't think that's that, that's a problem. Um, you know, maybe it's a situation where, uh, like we did last summer when we were working through things, is that um, is that the president appoints a, a board liaison to work with me and, and talk with you know our chef, whatever it might be, but. Um, Having having the chef in the you know coming out into you know into a board meeting into a public meeting on a monthly basis and doing that would be highly. It just like I said, it'd be the first time in my entire career that a club you know a club did that. How about Laura, Laura, and yourself discussing with us what changes we're making every month to see the improvement. Um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be, far, I'd be far, far more comfortable in that. I mean, the, the, the situation is, is getting the feedback on an instant basis so that we can, you know, that we can do that um, and we can, we can be addressing that. So it's really much more of, the, of, the, of, the, of getting the feedback quickly. Um, staff not saying goodbye or anything like that, I would assume that, you know, every time that you get your check presenter that if you're dining at the table, they say thank you very much and have a nice evening and, and things of that nature. Um, but let me speak with Chef and Laura, and, and let me, you know, correct. Sure, I have no issue with that. Uh, Kyle, you know I have been a proponent of having a restaurant committee, and you don't seem to want want one. Well, yeah, we have it. We 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 have we we have it. We have a social committee, um, and uh, and typically that's what that's what clubs do is they have they have a social committee. So, um, uh, excuse but, me. Uh, never mind what the other clubs do. What, what do you think? Should, should we have a restaurant committee or not? I've had good restaurant committees, and then I've had restaurant committees that basically have done nothing but consider their own personal interests and their desires and in, in how they want to do it. So, if the board if the board was so inclined to put together a restaurant committee, then it would have to be uh, a selection of candidates that have the, for lack of a better word, the right spirit of why they're serving on a restaurant committee. Yeah, if they have the right experience, would you be supportive of yeah, that? Yeah, if, if, if they, I certainly would. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it because I certainly want to continue the trend for outstanding food and beverage experience. Um, it's just making sure that the, you know, the committee is on there for the right purposes and that would be within its mission statement. Um, you know what I mean? It's it just, it, it just selecting the right people for the right reason that want to go ahead and the get involved. The objective of the committee would be to help the kitchen in the front of the house. So, which is, which is wonderful. So, but for, you know, so I'll, I'll, give you an, I'll give you an example. Ryan would be perfect because Ryan has a lot of food and beverage experience. So he, he, can, he can talk the language of, 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 of food and beverage. So, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a side example. In, in my world, with the club has started interior, interior decorating committees, et cetera, et cetera. And all the members that are on the interior decorating committee, they know nothing about interior decorating. They just know that they hired an interior decorator. But now they're going to advise the club on how the club should do it. So that's my point. You need somebody that has a food and beverage background that can, that chef can relate to so that when we're talking about um, food cost and menu mix and all those various things that is the talk of the food and beverage that people understand that. That's all. Well, Brian has the experience. I have the experience. So with, with a couple of more people like Brian and myself who are on the committee would certainly be a big help. To Ms. I support what the president supports. Uh, 
before we come to the issue of the committee, how about, uh, what do you think about continuing with the uh, ad hoc uh, meetings we had last summer? Well, if there's going to be a restaurant committee, then you wouldn't need two separate groups. I agree, but I'm saying if we don't have a restaurant committee or we can't decide right now, can we continue? I've, I've got no issue with that. Thank you. Any other questions or yes, comments? Yes, Dennis, I have a few that haven't been mentioned yet. Um, and we, I believe we talked about some of these at the budget meeting, Kyle, but the hours of operation. Correct. Um, a lot of feedback on having people down and want to bring them to dinner on a Monday night or Tuesday night and the, and the uh, club is closed. Um, so I've received a lot of feedback that we need to consider extended hours of operation. Now obviously there's costs associated that, with that that we're going to have to evaluate, but I did want to pass that along. Also the... You're talking in season, right? Yes, primarily right. in okay. season, yeah. And then the ad hoc changes to the hours of operation. Um, where people have come up, come up at a time that the clubhouse is supposed to be open, only to find the doors locked. Um, so I'm not sure the frequency of that, but I have heard on a few occasions where people have experienced that. Yeah, so then the, the, the way to address that is, is from a staff perspective that says, okay, so listen, say it's, say it's a Thursday night and it's 8 o'clock and the place is empty, for example. Everybody's, everybody's gone home and, and, and whatever it might be. So typically what happens is, is that they, they would close. But the directive could be, no, we close at 9 o'clock, and you'll just have to sit here, you know, until 9 o'clock, and then you, can, then you can close the doors. That's really just more of a, of a policy change, even though we know it costs us money because you have to have, you know, you've got to keep a bartender, you've got to keep, you know, your, your kitchen. You know, you have kitchen people to come on in, so... I mean, yeah, I understand. It's right. just that when people come and they expect it to be open and it's not open, they're not pleased. That's fine. I've got, I've got no issue with that. Um, overuse of buffets. I think we've, um, we've heard a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, use them when it's most appropriate, but it shouldn't be the normal course. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, this particular season, it was a, a needed necessity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, from from a staffing perspective and from a kitchen perspective, it's a tremendous amount of work to be setting them up. Um, you know, we start early in the afternoon on that. It's far easier, obviously, to do um, a la carte service from that. Um, but we feel very, very good heading into the new year that, you know, buffets will not be, obviously we'll do, we'll continue to do, do the buffets on Wednesday nights. We have no problem doing plated um, on that. So we'll try and convert basically, at least on general a la carte member functions, to much more a la carte. The last item is the quality of service. Um, unlike some of the other board members, I've, I've actually received compliments um, on um, most of the wait staff and how friendly they are and that they do a good job. Um, yes, there are opportunities for improvement, speed of service when you sit down, it takes time to get a drink, but Overall, the feedback I've received is that they're generally pleased with the staff that is, is on board now with the opportunity to, to now accentuate their abilities and get them trained. Right. And so what we need for the, for the drink service to come back a little bit quicker is we need, and we talked about it at the finance um, uh, meeting, is we need to get that, that definite swing bartender. Um, so that Janet can work the front bar and the service bar can be worked. Um, so that'll be critical, and we'll identify that position so that when we extend our hours, if, if I could find somebody right now, I would go ahead and do so, you know, just because for the, for, for the summer as well, for the three nights a week that we're open. So that position is still out there. That just triggered one other area that I've heard some, some feedback on, and that is, is the point of sale commission impacting their ability to, to serve on a more timely basis? The amount of time they're having to enter orders into the system, is, can that be expedited uh, to help improve the service? No, I mean, not that, not that, I'm, not that I'm aware of uh, whatsoever. I mean, the, the, Jonas point, the Jonas point of sale system is, um, uh, is widespread throughout the club industry. Uh, it's very widely accepted. It's very user friendly. Um, you have to remember that it does take some time to get your hands around that system, just like any other system. Uh, that point, the point of sale system. So it's not necessarily that. 
there has been a conversation of going ahead and getting the uh, the touch tones where you basically can order, you know, and, and do all of that type of stuff on that. Um, so I think one of the challenges that we have is, is that when you have, um, you know, obviously we have a lot of large parties, a lot of eight tops and six tops and things like that. So if you have, if you have an eight, eight top and a six top and a six top in your, in your station, and you're going around and getting the orders, you can imagine how much time that takes to go ahead and get the orders, and then head over to the point of sale system and, and put in that, put in that eight top, put in that six top, and put in that six top. It does take some, it does take some time. But I don't think it's a, a reason for us, and I don't know of any tools out there other than going to a handheld unit, which then communicates if that might save if that might save any time. Don't know. Okay, anybody else? Just a couple things. Um, one of the biggest, uh, I guess you call it a complaint, is that our lunch menu stayed pretty much the same from November all the way through now. And the only thing that really changes on it's the daily special, which is usually the highest priced uh, lunch item there is, because usually most of the daily specials are $14. Um, so the, the, a lot of the membership, I'd like to see the menu turn over a little bit more during season, you know, especially for lunch. Uh, and they also was, I think it would be a great idea to see more of a daily special rather than $14 for the special sandwich of the day, have something for 9 or $10, get people coming in here and having a couple drinks afterwards. Um, when I'm here in the fall, I play a lot of reciprocals. My wife and I both do. And they always have some type of golfer special that'll include a beer or a glass of wine when you come there and play their club. In fact, uh, a couple of clubs I played this fall in the pro shop uh, say, hey, do you want to go in for the lunch special afterwards? It's 10 bucks and you get a free beer or a glass of wine with lunch. I think that would, we could promote more people to come into the club after, after golf with seasonal play and summer membership play and reciprocal play to get more people in the club. Because you know how one beer will lead to two beers, which will lead to three beers, and the cost of a draft beer, uh, what we charge for it will be very profitable for the club. So the, um, I appreciate those comments, and that's exactly the conversation that, um, that I had with Laura and Chef. So the, the drink specials that I was talking with you about, we're going to pair those. We're going to pair those up with a lunch special so that when you do come into the club, especially if you're a reciprocal or whatever it might be, it's going to say, okay, do you want the lunch package? You know, and the golf shop can charge for it right away. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, also one of the complaints I've had and other people have told me is the bread. We, if you go out to any place, the delis or anything, they have a good crusted bread on their sandwiches. It doesn't get all soggy and fall apart. And I've asked them, as I've been around about four different places, and they use Naples Bakery is the secret. Hmm. That's where the good bread comes from. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Kyle, uh could you help us uh, send up uh, uh, an email to the membership to find out people who are qualified in the restaurant business who would like to join a, a committee if we form one? Sure. And uh, then we'll, Brian and I, or anybody else, to take a look at the people and see what we can, where we can go from there. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you. Carl, I also want to address uh, just some issues again. Uh, you know, we run these specials all summer long to get people in the door. You know, we're coming here November, December, this time of year, sometimes even in, the, in season, Monday, Tuesday, we're closed. Why aren't these specials being used in season to keep people and get people to come into the place? Um, the membership here is looking for obviously better hours, but I think better specials, better deals, Happy hour, maybe a few days a week. Uh, you you got to get people in the door to make to make a dollar first. If nobody walks in, we make zero. Ten ten people at a dollar is ten dollars. That's still better than zero. Um, I live in Amherst. I see this building seven days a week when I'm here, and when I see thirty people come out of this parking lot after dinner in a night, and there's three or four hundred, 
coming off the street off a rattlesnake, we have a problem. We need to have more people stopping at our restaurant and find a way to make people want to come to this restaurant and bar. There's too much, in my opinion, and I've done this my whole life, um, it bothered me in my business if I seen people going to work with my competitor. I changed. I did something different. I think that needs to happen here. Okay, this is all lists of complaints that I've got for membership, and we've had some feedback with emails. Jam said myself, it's gone back and forth to the committee. We've all had some copies of some of these things. And nobody ever wants to really get up and say something and get a little more nasty. There needs to be changes here. And just to say this is just the way they all do it down here, in my book, that's a poor answer. No. We, 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 we want change. And we deserve change. We, own, we all are part owners of this place. Mm -hmm. We want to we wanna come in here. But it's weird why we all go somewhere else. We need some answers to that. Well, well as you know, I'm very open-minded to any and all suggestions. I have no issue with you know, with doing that. I'm all for Royal Wood having an outstanding food and beverage experience, you know, every time that we're here. Um, uh, and the, in, in the board, the board's position will be to support, you know, what that financial implication is, because there's another group out there, as you very well know, being at the finance, at the finance meeting that we just had last week that says, oh my gosh, look at that subsidy for the food and beverage operation. You know, you should go ahead and open it up to the public. So this is all a this is all a philosophy issue for what this club wants to do. As you very well know, you know we can continue to keep food prices very low. I mean, and, and beverage prices very low. But the concept is, okay, how much do the membership want to pay? Because you're going to, I mean, as you very well know, you know the, the membership doesn't matter what the amenity is. You can you can pay the club now, or you can pay the club later. Some clubs have that philosophy that they would just as soon pay it later in their, in their annual assessment, okay? Um, and that's the, that's the philosophy that the board has, that the, the membership has, has said. So they want their menu prices and their, and their, and their beverage prices to be, to be them. Just put it in my dues. Whatever that assessment is, put it in my dues. And that's just more of a, of a philosophy change, you know, more than anything on what we want to do. But, yeah, it's a, it's a very, very tough fine line to balance what the subsidy should be you know, versus, you know, what the prices should be. But I'm more than happy to be part of that discussion and be open-minded about that, especially as we are gearing through for the, for the new budget year. Okay. Um, I personally am not a big fan of large committees. Uh, you know, I think too many chefs spoil the, spoil the broth. Um, so I'm not in favor of getting a restaurant committee. But what I am in favor of is setting up a restaurant advisory board. This board would consist of three board members, Jam Shed, Mark, Spadola, Brian. These three people would constitute a restaurant advisory board that would report to the master board. The advisory board should collect feedback from their constituents and others, as well as other board members, to develop some recommendations to be reviewed and discussed at board meetings. This group should develop a survey of the membership, have their input for what they are expecting from the restaurant, such as food preferences, happy hours, hours of operation, Sunday brunches, etc. They should meet with the manager of the departments of the restaurant to discuss how we can improve the operation. These meetings should be arranged with Kyle. The advisory board will make no decisions. The primary objective, objective for the advisory board is to make recommendations to the master board. One of the primary objectives of the master board is to have this restaurant operation to be one of the best amenities for our membership. That's my recommendation. Well done. Do, uh, uh, does anybody object to that or are all in favor of that? Or do we need a motion for that? 
I know it's not a real vote. No, it's not a real vote. Yep. I mean, if you have any objections, you're the yep. president, so you want to, you want to, you know, yep. just like you're doing. If anybody would like to object on the board, just let me know. Tell me. Edith, can I help you? We, I'll get that, Edith. Okay, the uh, next order of business is the approval of the committees for next year, which was submitted to the board. And uh, I'd like to know if anybody would like to make a... Um, there's, there's, not, there's only one board member that's a liaison to each committee. That's it. You cannot be on the committee. Sorry. <clears throat> All right. Anybody? Uh, uh, the, the committees, uh, anybody have any uh, discussion? I, on? I make a motion that we formalize and approve the standing committees that have been proposed to us for uh, the coming season. Any second? Dennis, what, what about the um, advisory uh, board? Is that is that an official committee that needs to be added, or is that outside of the standing committees? That's outside of the standing committees. Anybody want a second? Rick, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carry. Uh, the last thing we have is open forum. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we have Doreen Barad from Andover. Thank you. My name's Doreen Barad. My husband and I just bought last year, so I have a lot of questions. Probably they've already been answered, but I can't seem to find them anywhere. Um, first one, why is the summer golf program only limited to 70? Is there a reason why we cap it at 70? Especially when we were just discussing that we're turning people away. Just to make uh, more course availability for the members. Okay. Is there, has there been any research done as there hasn't been member availability during the summer? to maybe warrant bringing that to 80, 90? Or 100. Or 100. I'm just, I'm just asking why 70 was set. And if, if that's the reason, is has there been any further research and investigation as to members not being able to play? Not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. Uh, a few months ago, uh, last year sometime, I can't remember the exact time, I talked to Greg Long and he reviewed the open times available during the summer. And he determined that if he had 100 uh, summer members, it would not materially impinge on the members' time. So this is something the board may have to consider. Well, in October, in our budget, budget meeting, we would oh. consider that in the budget meetings in October. Great. Doreen, part of the issue, too, is it really isn't just a summer membership that goes um, until December 31st. So and there are a lot lasts. of people here in November and December that that's where I think the issue comes into play. Okay. Um, the other question I had was um, the health and safety, those seminars that were done over the summer. Is there a cost for those? They're free? Oh, okay. Great. Then I don't have that then. Um, there is a $4,000 line item for training under the food and beverage. Do we have any idea what that training consists of? 
and would that be part of this new retail ad restaurant advisory board? We seem to have a lot of conversation around training of the staff, and in 2021, there was a $4,000 line item associated with it, so we might want to look at what that training consists of and see if it's something that Um, I also, for those of you that don't know, um, I work for a company, a startup company called Mood.com, and I specialize in HR hiring, training, and firing. So if you need help in writing processes and policies, I'm probably the person you want to look to. So I'll happily raise my hand. Um, the last one. I got to go back to the hiring. We seem to be very reactive than proactive. We talked about having uh, buffets because we didn't have the staff. Is there any way that we can get hiring and job descriptions on the website, LinkedIn, maybe put a budget line item in for doing Indeed, Monster.com? We seem to be in a good position now, but if the fall things are gonna be picking up again and people are leaving, I don't know what the attrition rate is here, people coming and going, but we wanna be a little bit more proactive rather than reactive. So like, I don't know what we can do to get that on there, but if the staffing issue and having buffets is associated to that, we want to get a little bit ahead of that. So I don't know what the process would be to get, you know, jobs out there listing on the website because Friday's meeting was Kyle's handing out business cards and that may have been good back then, but so, there's better ways to So, um, Dorian, I'm more than happy. Are you a year-round resident? No, I'm not. When That's you, why I'm really pushing for when Zoom you, When well. are you leaving? Um, I actually don't even live here full time. I rent and then I come in vacation and use it. So I'm okay. pretty much here every month for like a week. Okay, because I'd be more than happy to meet with um, Debbie and I, and we more than happy to roll through because we do use we do use Indeed. You know, we've used we've used Monster. You know, we, we've we've done all of, all of those all of those aspects. Um, so your experience would be good, but we'd be more than happy to share with you. Um, you know what what our experience is what we what we have found out more is that there are less and less people that are interested in getting into becoming a server or a bartender they're, they're established but but I'd be more than happy to share with you what we've done and then you put your polish on that and say okay well here's what I think we want to peel yeah. away and let's head down and head down into into that road that'd be great okay but yep. my pleasure yep All right, thank you. Um, the second, uh, second and last uh, open forum person is Ray Fern. I've got to say, I've been here quite a few years, and I've never seen a better active board of directors that I sat here and listened today. I love to have you guys talking and expressing what you want to do, and I think you're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Ray. One last item. <laughs> For the gentleman here telling about they're going to send surveys and costs, make sure those costs are good, and let the people know what these things are really going to cost, and we, we don't want to happen what happened in renovation two, where we get one price and it's 50% higher. Give us the cost. We'll, we'll be willing to pay for it, but just be, let us know exactly. Take time to make sure we get the right cost. Okay, thank you. All right, that's it for our agenda. Uh, anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? Like, well, they'll be in, they'll be in the book. I mean, there's like four pages of them okay. on the yeah. website as well. I guess website as well. We can put it on. All right. Anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? Rick Murphy makes a motion. All right. Brian's Brian seconded. All in favor? All right.
Leslie Borg is here. Yes. So, I hope you're not offended that I have to speak to one. Well, thank you for the no, good job. No, no. Not Thick skin, I can handle it. 